being October 7, 2019, at 7.49 p.m., I call this town meeting to order. I will entertain a motion to admit. Ms. Mandibella. Mr. Moderator, I move to admit the following persons to this town meeting. Darren Klein, Maureen Marie Doherty, Janet Murphy, Matthew Cooper, Scott Thornton, Steve Letterman, Allison Payne, Harold Miller, Robert Carboni, Jason Smith, Phil Healy, Debbie Carboni, Mary Ann McNaggy, Marley Stevens, Mark Hamill, Susan Agner, Al Herrera, Mark Clark, Mike Murphy, Sharon Kelleher, John Clifffell, Danielle McKnight, Patrick Bowers, John Bernard, Ray Gallant, Henry Kalmars, <coughs> John O'Keefe, Linda Batchelder, Chris Batchelder, David Bajarchuk, <coughs> Zuyang Zhang, Michelle Morello Griswold, Kathleen Laco, and Gerald Austin. we need to take a hand count. Counting the front and my left, Sean Delaney. Thank you, Sean. Counting the center section, Lori Capizzuto. And counting to my right, Ed McGrath. Please turn off these things so as not to interrupt the meeting. Everybody should be wearing a red badge. You need to be seated, that's part of the fire code, so please find a seat, there are available seats. For the visitors in the... There are visitors in the media center that are not affiliated and they should all be wearing black badges. So if you're in the media center wearing a red badge, please come to the main hall, otherwise you won't be voting. A couple of other rules. Again, you must be recognized by me before speaking. Do not shout out from your seat. And no personal attacks.
At this time, I'd like to do a moment of silence for two uh, town employees recently passed away. Martin Fair, who 30, I think was 30 or maybe even more than 30 years as the um, Board of Health Director, and Ruth Leiden, Planning Administrator. Now that the Pulting property is well on its way, I think it has its third building going up, and I think its fourth foundation. Don't get that off. Is that any better? I'm here on behalf of the Economic Development Committee. Now that Pulte home properties is, I think their third building is almost complete, and the fourth foundation is going to the ground. The Economic Development Committee was taking a look at what other things could be done and should be done. And, uh, we felt as though what was uh, lacking and what was necessary was to bring together our business owners and commercial property owners to see basically how we can help them. So we have a business forum that's scheduled for Thursday, August, October the 24th at Kitties. We're going to discuss several different things, but we want to give them an update on where the town stands in terms of our water source and what's going on in the update on wastewater which we hope to get into town, I guess it's anywhere from about six to 10 years. Uh, but it's something on the horizon. Uh, in addition to that, we want to discuss with them a zoning and, and permitting and how we can expedite permitting. Uh, and also to discuss a uh, whole host of things that we as an economic development committee think are important, such as tax incentives, We've met with the state, and the state has informed us that it's pretty much wide open. So for any business owner that may be in the audience tonight, or a commercial property owner, we hope you will attend, come and attend and hear from us. But most importantly, we would like to hear from you. Thank you. And it's nice to see town meeting so well attended. Mr. Gilbert. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Can everybody hear me? So just a couple of recognitions that we wanted to call out this evening while we're here together. Um, the Superintendent of Schools, John Bernard, has informed the school committee of his intention to retire at the end of the year. We thank him for his service. Superintendent, thank you. Longtime Conservation Commission member Martin Weiss has also announced he's stepping down from the commission. Um, he has uh, nearly 30 years of experience and dedicated service, so we thank him for his service. <laughs> and finally, to Joseph Fodi, select board member and uh, also a uh, finance committee member until the end of this past fiscal year, we thank him for his service. Mr. Moderator, through you, I wish to provide the body an update regarding uh, an important uh, discussion that's going on in the community regarding the 20 Elm Street project. Uh, there's an article later on where there'll be discussion of a transfer of funding, um, Article 7 uh, for the fiscal year 2020 budget. Uh, that discussion is likely to be limited to the merits of the transfer itself, but I know there's been a lot of conversation about the statement I'd like to offer uh, the town meeting in the community as well. The zoning code of appeals indication of safe harbor on August 22nd was based on a report that reflected good faith efforts by staff in the planning and engineering departments, a report that's been posted online for weeks. While we are disappointed that the State Department of Housing and Community Development elected not to conduct the independent evaluation required by the department's own regulations, that they failed to explain how a developer gained access to confidential group home locations, and that they did not investigate the potential that there are additional state group home units here in North Reading that are not reflected in the subsidized housing inventory. This determination is not unexpected and is consistent with every other determination that DHDD has made denying the community's assertion of safe harbor based on the general land area minimum. Staff in multiple departments have continued to pour over property records over the past few weeks to ensure that every last acre is accounted for in our calculation of land use for affordable housing in North Reading. We will provide an update to the Zoning Board of Appeals for its consideration this Thursday evening. North Reading has had a pr proud history of working with developers in the interest of citing affordable housing in the right spot, with the right density, in the right buildings. We have not turned our back on this need, on those in need, and we look forward to the opportunity for the Zoning Board of Appeals to potentially present this fact on a full record, if it so chooses, to the State Housing Appeals Committee, and if necessary, beyond. That said, there is a legal process under the HDD regulations. We'll respect that process, and I'm unable to, to comment further at this time. Thank you. Any other boards or committees seeking recognition under this article? Hearing none, the support of the second wish to make a recommendation. Thank you. 
discussion. It just requires a couple of minutes, so all those who did, please say aye. Aye. Vote. Unanimous. Article, Article 3.
So we don't want to get in a debate about the project. So we're not going to get into the debate as far as the merits of the aggregate or the specifics of the project itself or the proposal. And we're going to discuss it with the other issue before we get into the issue of the project so that it's just more than the legal process. I agree with you. I just, it's not state within the four months. And that's not for you. That's what we're talking about here. Thank you. 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 Motion. This is the way. First of all, thank you for coming tonight. This is refreshing. It's nice to see so many people willing to participate. This is where the voices are. This is where the money is going to be raised or created and spent. So thank you for participating. I hope you find this an enjoyable experience. I'm excited to join us going forward to it. But that being said, this library, I move to amend this year, 2020, operating budget. Order number 15, June 10, 2019, goes to our meeting as follows. Transfer of free cash, sum of $125,000, to the line 7 town council, and specify the line 7 as printed in the mark. Recommendation from the second, Mr. Miller.
Yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Good. Uh, Je uh, Jeff Muir, 427 Park Street. Uh, just to make sure that I understand, we're going to, uh, we're asking for $125,000, but on Thursday, is that the date that you said that the Zoning Board of Appeals would decide whether to go forward or not? Correct. So that is our next big meeting. several times the town's position. Could you clarify a little bit what successfully defeating the 40B qualification, I mean, what's the end game here? So we're gonna, if the town likely votes to approve this transfer, you've mentioned that it could set off a potentially long and protracted expensive process. What's the end look like? What are we, what's the end goal of these funds? So, as far as the 
Wendy Emerson and I live at 100 Lowell Road. Wendy Emerson and I'm sorry, I guess. 100 Lowell Road. Sorry, thank you. Ma'am. Janet Nicosia, 2 Poplar Terrace. Um, a couple of questions. One, if the 40B um, process is not allowed for this person to develop that property, then is it true that they could still develop apartments there under the current zoning and that it just would not include the affordable um, part of it? That's one question one. I'll give you the second just so you, actually, you can, for e easier for you. On, um, this is $125,000 on an operating budget which means that that is to be expended during tw FY 2020. And you're talking about a process that could take up to two years. Is $125,000 only to carry the legal expenses expected from now until June 30th? And then do you expect to come back for more um, at the April or May town meeting to then fund what be might be needed next year? as to if this is going to be a two-year process of what type of costs we're talking about. I mean, we're being asked in a few articles to vote on the high school to continue legal fees that have now are up near a million dollars so far with no resolve. How much do we think this is going to cost the taxpayer? We believe this is going to cost $125,000. Okay, back to my first question and about. The first question is: you know, under the current zoning, it is my right, the owner of the property, who have an opportunity to develop it. It's going to be around eight to ten, okay, nine, eight to ten, nine, nine, six, seven years. My right. 
How many? Nine. Oh, nine, and, and instead of 120. No, instead, instead of 200. Instead of 200. Okay. All right, thank you. So by the way, the Article 8, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Moderator, I move to pass over Article 8 as printed in the warrant. Consider Article 7. Reconsider Article 7. If you say yes, it will come back on the floor for more debate. All those in favor of reconsideration of Article 7, please say yes. All those opposed?
Article 9, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Moderator, I move to appropriate from free cash the sum of $250,000 to negotiation, mediation, and or litigation with PLA Consultants LLC, Dora Media Architects, and any other appropriate entities, considering the Secretary to a little private and all costs incidental to the litigation to. All is a process that I do not deny to the law.
further discussion? Jeff Hewitt, 427 Park Street. Uh, I was on the board, and one of the members that had to uh, go through the process and listen to the, the arguments pro and, and, and con on this issue. And uh, I have to, you know, in agreement with uh, uh, the board right now and, and uh, Mr. O'Leary, that uh, it wasn't taken lightly. We realized that this would be a long-term issue and that there were uh, issues that were occurring uh, that uh, PMA and Dawn Whittier uh, were not upfront with us uh, about. So uh, we spent a lot of money, 
uh, if I recall, the, the initial quote by uh, the uh, uh, Whittier, I believe, uh, or PMA, was like 88 uh, million dollars, and then it went up to 120 some odd million dollars. So uh, we, we had to consider that we were not getting all the necessary information, information that we need. Okay, to make educated uh, decisions on the building of this uh, beautiful school. So, what's the thing my own? Uh, I concur that uh, uh, we support this issue uh, because uh, we have to correct an error that was made. And uh, uh, so, we to so, thank you.
Mr. Moderator. Mr. McGrath. Ed McGrath, 8 Wall Road. I move to amend the main motion and pass over Article 10. Mr. Moderator, Ed McGrath, 8 Laurel Road. The reason I made this motion is I, th I said this the last, at the last town meeting when we appropriated, I think, $10,000 to start. I think this is a rabbit hole right now. We don't know what I expect that the town meeting would be asked to appropriate further funds in the future. And I don't think there's, can the town articulate what the policy is with these type of roads and the other roads in town that are not paved but have residents on them, residential homes on them. I think there's a lot of loose ends that need to be tied up, and I think the town needs town time to develop the policy of what they're going to go, do going forward and what it's going to cost to the town as far as getting these roads paved and accepted, et cetera, et cetera. So I think this, at this time, this is too, too soon. We should pass over. Um, my understanding is not all the residents on Swan Pond Road are in favor of this project. I just think until some other issues get resolved, we should put this on hold until a few future date. Thank you. Sir, you see any You want to go to the microphone in? Right. Philip Bravada, 223 Swan Pond Road. Uh, this article has been passed over three times already, and I think it's time we, we deserve a vote. Um, the, the residents are going to pay half the, uh, the cost of this operation, and it's, it's hard at that. I mean, we couldn't possibly do this by ourselves. And the reason is, it started out as just a paving project, but now it's become a paving environmental protection project. Uh, the study came in at a cost of, uh, I believe it was $201,000, and contingency money is 150000 at this point in time. So there's enough contingency money that if something were to be required that wasn't expected, we would be prepared to handle that. But uh, again, I just say that uh, to pass over, I mean, it's been happened three times, I said we put it to a vote and, uh, and then we'll iron it out and get it done. Thank you. On the motion to pass over, let's go there. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The vote is like a, is in favor of the main motion for the vote. We're not in favor of passing the vote. We're in favor of moving it forward for discussion and action on this topic. So we would urge you not to support the motion to pass the vote. In relation to passing the vote, right, Mr. Carvalho's point, you know, uh, residents of this area have been, actually, two decades, 20 years, right, work on it for getting the town to, to assist them in getting this road paid. Better condition than it is right now. Uh, so this is the, the grass point. 
we do not avoid to select what does not currently have a policy for roads such as these this one here. Yet, in relation to shared parks, we do have uh, bylaws and amendment of bylaws or unacceptable streets that have a layout where it's a 50% share opportunity with the residents of the town. The town will Thank you. 
Selectman, um, who's responsible for developing this plan? Who within the town or its agencies? Um, and if this has been passed over three times, has a has a plan been started? Is there a plan under development? This is, this is all, there have been a number of discussions already with the residents that have come to visit us. Um, I think in, informally, we understand the contingencies that show us. Um, I think it's going to be a sign of the work. over this article, it would be the town selectman that would ultimately be responsible for developing the plan that the fund, spending the funds is contingent on? Yes. Yes, we're not going to spend money until um, we have a plan in place that would be a good business. That would be a good business. Thank you. And this is your, uh, three weeks to ask questions. So there's two components that are working here. One piece is the engineering work I would just like to say that the residents of Swan Pond don't want to move forward without a policy also. And we were hoping to get this approved so then we could work out that policy during the winter and when the construction season arrives, after waiting all this time, we could then proceed. Um, Mr. Kelleher has been at uh, probably all of our meetings and uh, has always gotten up and spoken against us for one reason or another but really never offered any con anything constructive so that we could come up with a policy. Um, 
I, in the beginning, you made your motive, ulterior motive clear is that you wanted the money for your program. Well, uh, this is something I, I, I guess. Oh, I oh, oh, oh. One of the most <laughs> Let's not get into a duel between you and Mr. Keller. Okay, well, I guess I've spoken my mind, and uh, sorry if I offended anybody. Thank, Thank you, sir. Uh, Michael Hull, 10 Cogs Roll Road. Uh, I think I heard someone say they didn't see any reason why we couldn't have a policy in place by next town meeting. If this has been passed over at three town meetings, why isn't there a policy now? Is there a problem getting a policy done? There's no, there. Uh, no, there is no problem getting a policy done. There's uh, the reason that it hasn't been done to date. Again, this is somewhat of a unique situation within our community. So we came to town meeting. First time, two town meetings ago, we passed it over. Last time, we needed appropriated money and an engineering consultants to take a look at the scope of the project. So until we, have, until we found out the scope of the project was going to be, we didn't have truly a good idea as to what Again, all unique, and there's a new one that's related to the range of plans and all of that. 
This, this one here comes out of the top here with a little bit of a dress called the fold. And this is actually a little bit for us to pull it out of our policy. So are you saying that the policy you're going to come up with is a policy for the Swan Pond Road, but not the rest of the no, town? it will be for situations like the Swan Pond Project in the It will be for the rest of the world. It will not be just specific to this one. But this one here gives you're, us you're a benchmark. This one here whoa, 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 whoa. gives us a benchmark to work from. So we feel good about that. Wait, wait, wait to be recognized before you Sorry. speak, both in the audience and up front, please. I guess it seems to me Steve is is, uh, is contradicting himself. He says it's not for the whole town, and then he says it is for the whole town. So. Mr. O'Leary. said in the last few minutes. Number one, the fact that if the paving season is in the spring, the summer, and fall, that this is not necessarily be two to three years out. I think that's a scare tactic. Number two, it was earlier brought up about $250,000 of legal fees that could be spent elsewhere. I'm sure the FinCom would appreciate 175 grand going to the stabilization fund. And I still say we don't have a policy the comment's been made that we should put the money up and we'll think of something afterwards. I think we should get our swans in a row before we appropriate any funds. Thank you. Well, I just the, this, this, is this is not a This is a two to three years before pavements laid at Swamp Pond, I think is misleading, it's not totally accurate, and I, I just think it's, it's erroneous. So I just, it could be done soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Ewell. You see, Mr. Rob. Dana Rowe, 12 Dogwood Lane. Uh, I'd just like to make a couple points clear. Uh, number one, the town has done studies, a number of studies. We actually have done work up on Swamp Pond Road on that section. We have permits from the people up there We've, the town has taken down trees. They've removed stops. The town engineer did a study up there. One of the things was, and this was years ago, I don't know if it's still true, it's cheaper to take care of a paved road in the town than it is a dirt road. Therefore, in a long run, we're going to be saving the town money. We've tried in the past to do a number of dirt roads in the town, and we've always seemed to run up with this thing about we got to do studies, we got to do engineer, we got to do all of these things. Yet in the past, we have done some of the roads. And one of the roads we did up there was Adams Street. It was done. There wasn't all of this stuff going on. The big point here is it's going to be cheaper for the taxpayers if we pave these roads. Because every year, we, the town has to go up there, they have to maintain the road, they have to plow it, they put down reprocess stuff, it's pushed to the side, it's run off, there's mud holes, there's potholes, they have to send raiders up there, 
They do this three or four times a year, and it's, co it's very costly in the town. Therefore, we should go forward and get this thing done. And uh, Kathy Bythrow to Brooks Road. Um, my main concern right now is um, whether our first responders can respond to homes on that road. I know I live near Travel Way, which was a private street. I'm not sure how that was taken care of, but having ridden my bike at the age of 10 and walked my children's baby carriages on it with all the potholes, I do appreciate my walks with the dog now as a street that I know can be safely traveled with you know, the apparatus that our first responders um, are, are traveling. Um, I do hope that this is done without, with all of the Storm Pond residents in agreement with what needs to be done, but I'm concerned about um, our, you know, police and fire departments being able to get to those homes when they need to. Is that, has that been an issue, or? It's been an issue. It's just the whole area. It has been an issue over the years, which the town has attempted to address, getting this challenge, getting it out of the particular fire apparatus, I think that's just, uh, but over the years, they've been able to uh, uh, raid a little bit of fire, there's been a couple of turnarounds that have been put in, which makes it a little bit easier for uh, public safety vehicles to access and get up to the residents. So it's far better than it was 30 years ago, but it's uh, still not great. That's what it is for some of these Hi, um, Minos Cavaldez, 28, Flint Street. I move by motion to move the question. I motion to move the question. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. The question before you is to pass over subsidiary motions to pass over Article 10. All those in favor, please say aye. This is Delaney. 
fails, when the fifteen yes, when the fifty-two no. Now when the main motion is to be heard, and when I guess we only have a lot of debate, but it's to be heard. Thank you, Mr. Margaret. Sorry, for the presentation, so we can talk about that now as well, because it will be a study. There are 19 parts of one of the world to be paved, four of which are town owned. There are four additional properties beyond the limits of the world to be project. All but one property owner, only two hours, has to sign off on the paving of the property. The above is being asked to contribute 50% to the total project cost, which is projected to be $350,000. The appropriation here for the town meeting will be $175,000 as it was also moved. And the neighborhood meeting was held on September 23rd, and the select board had a discussion last Monday night. This is an issue that shows a little bit of the limits of paving. You can see that it starts on the right hand side here on the quadrant sheet. This is the swamp fire coming in from um, the uh, developed area, the slip here of Adams Street and Swamp Fire Road. Beginning the here through these parcels, all the way through to the past that turned around and was constructed by the DBW four years ago. This is information that is frequently asked questions, some of which were brought up here earlier this evening. There are 4.86 miles of gravel roads in already, 0.7 miles of those are private or they're on the layout. 4.16 miles of those roads are uh, unaccepted roads that do show on the plan but have not been accepted as public roads by town meeting. The estimated cost to pay all the gravel roads in town is $2.31 million. Um, the roads will require routine maintenance. The typical road has a 15 to 20 year lifespan. Based on the last three years, the average cost to maintain all gravel roads in the already is $28,300 per year. With the cost of maintaining Swan Farm Road itself approximately $3,360 per year. Further discussion.
and uh, stormwater prevention, you know, protection for the, for the farm and the drinking water source. A holistic approach really needs to be in place before you start pressing of, of helping out one street where you've got ramifications across a lot of different people in the town. Thank you. Mr. 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 Marty Johnson, Nine Oscars Way. I actually have three questions. Um, having been involved in a road project in another uh, state, I know that bringing the equipment in and, and doing the work is, is, is cost effective to do the whole road. Why are we excluding four parcels at the end? Why is there a problem there? I'd just like to have an idea of that. Now, what are you going to do about those two parcels in the middle? Are you really going to stop the pavement and start it up again? And if so, I hope your policy is considering holding that person responsible for the maintenance of that. Um, the town should have some leverage in that situation. If they're not going to participate, um, we should fund it. And the $3,360 $3, a year, um, how do you expect that figure to change? And I'm actually sorry, there is a fourth question. There's $2 million of roads to be paid. Is your policy that you say is going to be based on this particular project, are we then going to offer openly to the other roads the same opportunity, which means you're going to come back to us for 1.15? I can repeat those in order. Yeah. <laughs> number three, it's basically it's 50 percent of savings is approximately. Okay. Um, what was your first question? Uh, why are we not extending it to the entire road? There are four parcels at the end. I'm oh, that was the second question. Okay. Just to go over, as we understand it, the property owners toward the end are not open to the of the road, um, and so therefore the limit of the project is going to be So that would be an added. They would have done it on the track on a paid portion of the land in the area. I've identified that. What about the middle step? Mr. Okay. I would say that uh, as far as the process is in the middle, that currently there's no uh, desire to have it done. Uh, that would be a first step policy as to whether or not we are willing to, from a policy standpoint, stop the start. So we'll determine that. 
here and it's for you know things like trash collection and and for the schools but also it would be nice if everyone had a paved road so that they didn't have to deal with some of the issues so I I'd just like to point that out that I think that this would be part of that thank you thank you and uh, Rosalie Cravada 223 Swan Pond Road um, I, I thank the select board for um, what, what you've said you explained everything very well. The only thing I would like to add is um, Swan Pond Road, uh, it's been over 20 years. We have uh, requested this uh, going back since 1998. Uh, we worked with previous uh, DPW directors who kind of did an uh, informal betterment where they split 50-50 uh, doing some of these, these paved roads. I have uh, worked over all these years getting permission signed from residents, uh, you know, attending meetings. Uh, and it's only uh, three years ago when there was another turnover with DPW administration that we had to again start from scratch again. We went to the board. So in these last three years, we've been going through this process of town meetings. Uh, you know, they did the engineering study. I, I feel like. The, the town is saying, you know, we're willing to, to put forth this po a policy. Uh, for the time being, you know, Swan Pond can be used as the, the model. Um, the money that would be set aside would come from free cash. Uh, and so if, if in the end it, it unraveled and it doesn't happen, the money just goes right back in, into free cash. But I do feel like we have uh, been going through this process for a long time, and we were in the queue for some years, and through no, no fault of our own, just through you know change in uh, administrations in town, uh, we kept you know getting pushed to the side. So we just ask if you could please support this. Um, it, it would obviously be good for us, but I think it would help the board as well. Uh, set a policy in place um, to, to deal with this town-wide. Thank you. Ed McGrath, 8 Laurel Road. Just a question on like a timeline. Is there a deadline for the residents of Swan Pond to come up with their share of the money? And is there a timeline to get this done? What, what, what's the schedule here? Back before town meeting, you have your policy. You ask for approval of this. 
This is just completely backwards. You don't use one street in order to form your policy. The policy should apply to all these unacceptable streets. It just seems to be backwards to me. It's unfortunate that Swan Park people have come back for three years in a row now, or three town meetings in a row, and the board doesn't have a policy yet. It makes, it's all backwards to me. Mr. O'Leary. Just to keep it in perspective, Swan Farm Road, the unaccepted private streets represent less than 20%, 15 to 20% of the roads we're talking about. All the rest of the unpaid roads, from under existing policy and existing model, through the weather process, only these small, few number of streets, this is what this is going to be one of the largest streets that needs to be addressed. So we don't see it as, as an impediment of not having a specific policy in place yet in order to move forward with this project. We're willing to put a policy together the next two to three months, lower that, public area to that, lower that, and then we'll address this particular group of residents and any other residents on a private road who want to come forward and put up 50 percent of money up front before we send it back. That's fine. You know, so if it's not that mature, and there isn't that much in the way of unaccepted streets that are really looking it's a very small Mr. Delaney. Mr. Moderator, all due respect, Mr. O'Leary, to the board, we've had three years to come up with a policy. It doesn't matter whether it's a half mile, seven tenths of a mile, four miles, 20 miles. The policy should come first. I guess I need clarification here. Of the 4.61 miles that would be covered under the bed, I don't believe there is a policy on how we select those roads, how we fund those roads, how much we're going to fund every year for those roads. So I think that needs to be in the policy. I understand there is a policy that says it's a bed, there is a cost sharing of the residents, but if every one of the 4.16 miles came in next year, we had to put out a million dollars to cover our half of the cost. We couldn't do it. It's a whole thing to get popped back into that. I just think that's policy that isn't done. Uh, this is the point. I've got to fix in. I have no projects. I am a volunteer in this town.
I'd like to move the question, please. Move to the question. Move to the question. Move to the question. All those favor, move to the question. Please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. All those favor. Well, I'm sorry. It's been a long time, Mr. Day. So, could I have a recommendation from the Board of Selectmen, please? Mr. Wong. The Board recommends. The Finance Committee. Mr. Keller. The Finance Committee unanimously yes. recommends to yes. Really? <laughs> I didn't think, think of that. that. Oh, I didn't think of that. All right. All those who favor the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah. It did it again. And a lot of people left. This will be interesting. If my colleagues will please count. All those who favor, please raise your hands. Six two six. Twenty eight two eight.
Tell us to please now. Twenty seven, two seven. Twenty six, two six. Yes, 116, no, 90, and 20, 21 people left the room. Motion carries. Would 
Would everyone please sit down? Would you please, if you are in favor of reconsideration, stand to be counted?
Awesome, you didn't even hit five minutes. There's no gary And I'm not calling on it the rest of the night. All right, further discussion. It's you. Uh, thank you very much. And I apologize that I have a bunch of questions. And I know it's safe if you like to hear what you're going to ask questions. So, forgive me. <laughs> but uh, I have a few concerns. And I tried to speed it up. I gave uh, the board uh, the, a select board a copy of my, my questions so to help speed this up. But uh, if uh, North Reading intends to take possession in order to sell the property, there must be an advertised RFP. You mentioned in there that. Uh, there's a process that you're going to have to go through. Our concern is that a quick flip of the property would be hindered by the newly acquired process of sale in the property. The lawyers uh, will have to try and negotiate indemnification agreement with the Mass CDP. Assistance by the US EPA in the cleanup may be necessary, and there are a lot of complex moving parts that will rack up a lot of billable hours. So my questions are, I'll ask one, if you've had a chance to look at it, I'll ask one and then they can answer it. And if it's okay, I'll ask the next one. If that's, if that's okay, we'll do that. As long as you wait for recognition before you ask the second one, and they wait for recognition before they answer this. You gotta do it. <laughs> okay. E evaluation and remedial options for contaminants in the bedrock is very expensive, possibly costing in the millions. How will the town pay for the, this expense, and what is our monetary exposure? Thank you, Mr. Yule, for considering this. I had the same, very same concerns as you. The idea behind this article, the idea behind this acquisition, is to have a potential developer of the parcel come forward to cover those costs. These would be contingencies that would have to be worked out in agreements, not just between the town and the developer, but the developer and DEP. So those are the types of considerations that we could give to the most advantageous offer. Whoever comes forward and makes the best presentation of how we're going to get this site cleaned up and back on the tax rolls is the one that's going to probably win the bid in an RFP. So we wouldn't want to do anything that would cost the town any money in this process. So the idea being allow someone to come forward with an offer on cleanup and acquisition, and it would be the their cost to cover that, as well as cover some sort of re repayment of lien to DEP. So all of those would be dependent on what comes forward in an offer. Mr. Moderator? Yes. What would happen if uh, in the RFPs we don't get a satisfactory, we, we purchase the property, it's now the larger town of North Bay, and no one comes up with an offer that is suitable to cut up the cost. Mr. Mangala. All right, Mr. Delaney. Mr. Yu, as, as presented in the presentation, the town has to land court, land court to vacate the town's ownership of property. I'm sorry, repeat that until I can understand you. As indicated in the presentation that I just gave a couple minutes ago, uh, the town could ask the land court to vacate the town's ownership in the property. Okay, I didn't pick up on that. Not a question. Yes, the historic communities maintain tax lien, but will never assume the environmental liability when taking actual possession of contaminated properties. Will the town take on the liability of this property? May generate. Ms. Van Pelt. Thank you, Mr. Yule. I have the same exact concern when we consider this at the board meeting. We heard from our attorney, Attorney Blake, who is from KP Law, our real estate attorney. We also heard from Attorney Coppola, who is, you may recall these two individuals, who is also our tax title counsel. It has always been thought that once a town acquires under 21E and becomes the owner of the parcel, that we would be the responsible party required to clean up. There was a change in that and for this particular circumstance, it is indemnified. However, these are the types of things that must be ironed out in agreements, and that's why 
the idea is to take it to the point of a judgment for tax take taking. And that was discussed in the select board meeting, and that was the um, recommendation to our tax title attorney is to proceed to the point of taking a judgment and let's iron out the details if someone comes forward, if a developer comes forward with an advantageous offer. So don't take it, or if we did take it, we could uh, uh, rescind the taking in, in uh, court if we did take it, so we don't become responsible and don't spend any funds to uh, clean it up. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Ms. Siebel, she has a comment. I know. She knows all the questions. Well, we sat next to each other for a few years, so, so we rubbed off on each other. <laughs> if I, 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 we have another question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the, um, you had some numbers up there. I, saw, I thought I saw a number of $534,000. Uh, I think that was the value of the property. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, for, uh, yeah. You said that is a five hundred and sixty seven thousand. Okay, here it is. Okay. Uh that's the assessed value. What have you done any or looked at any uh, market value on this property at all? Do you have an idea that it's generate a million dollars now or what what happened? Mr. Jane Keller, I'm sure you had the same concern. <laughs> I think this is a good idea, all right? And I want to just all be clear that um, uh, you know, there's a lot that goes into this. We put a lot of effort into, into making sure that the, the uh, uh, costs can be covered uh, and so on. The, the idea is to get it back onto the tax roll, and that's always a good idea. So I thank you for that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. Safe ride home.